Welcome to the Irresistible You podcast. This is the place to get a dose of empowerment to create the life you crave and deserve. I'm your host, Amy Beltran, CEO and founder of Irresistible University. Through my podcast and signature online coaching program, I teach women just like you how to ditch the body image issues, gain confidence, and lose the emotional weight to look and feel irresistible at any size. If you like the podcast, you're going to love working with me and my group coaching program. If you would like to learn more about it, including the investment, see what's included, get real client testimonials, and to sign up and enroll, please head over to irresistibleicing.com slash course. That link is also in the show notes. All right, everybody, welcome to episode 167. The topic today is about how to know where to make changes to your diet. I have a methodology that I'm gonna share with you guys, and this is a continuation from episode 166. Last week, we talked about how it is time to get honest with yourself about food, how to really you know, have these honest conversations with yourself that are free of judgment, where you're really getting honest with yourself about what you're doing and what you're not doing when it comes to your weight loss goals. So if you haven't listened to that episode, I highly recommend you go back and you listen to that one first. All right, so let's get started here. All right, so first and foremost, let me just get this out of the way and say it. Um, When I say the word diet, I am not talking about, you know, a bullshit fad diet in that sense. I'm talking about what diet was originally supposed to mean. A diet is the type of food that you eat. <laughs> so a diet simply means the the food that you consume every day. So your diet right now might be fast food and chocolate, and that's okay. Um, j- just know when I say making changes to your diet, we're not talking about going and changing and finding the latest, greatest fad diet because that goes against all of my beliefs. It goes against everything that I teach. So just wanted to put that out there and get it out of the way. All right, so how did it go? For those of you that have listened to the prior episode, did you do your homework? Have you done your work? In that last episode, um, I tasked you with writing down what it is you're eating. We did not talk about planning what you're eating. We did no type of meal prep, meal planning. That was not part of the part of the work. We talked about simply continuing what you're doing right now without making a bunch of changes and just writing down what you're eating. And just to quickly recap that, the reason for that is we need to be able to see the data. We need to be able to see and be honest what we're consuming. Because when you do not write it down, you create a story in your head. I'm doing everything right. I don't know why I'm not losing weight. I've been following my plan and I'm not losing weight. I've been staying in my points range. I've been staying in my calorie range. Whatever it is that you're doing, you know, for those of you that do different things. And you create this story that you're doing everything right and you must just be this massive, you know, failure. You can't do it. You'll never lose weight. And you create this story. And it's very easy to use that as a defense mechanism well, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. And I always come back and I say, but are you? Are you really being honest with yourself about that? Because if you're not focused and you're zoning out and you're zombie eating and all those things, you don't necessarily know because you don't have the data. And if you don't have the data, you can't analyze and you can't make changes. So... That is the point and the objective of having you write everything down. And the whole point of that as well is to do it without the inner fat bitch judgment. You're not going to write your food down and go, oh my God, I can't believe I ate fast food twice and I had this chocolate and this piece of cake and oh my God, no wonder you're so fat. That is not part of the assignment, okay? Part of that assignment, another thing it's setting you up to do is to learn how to stop judging yourself and your choices so if you haven't done it that's okay Um, today is your day to start whenever you're hearing this whatever day it is not tomorrow 
not next week, not next month. You start today and you just, all you need is paper and a pen or bring out the notes on your, on your phone. You can do it either way. It does not matter. What matters is that you do it. Okay. And I participated as well because I've been feeling a little um, off track, so to speak. And it really creates a level of self-awareness when you start writing down your food. Okay. Because again, that pretending like you don't know what's going on, living in denial about what you're really consuming and what you're really doing with food, that is a form of self-sabotage. That is a form of self, like, like being in defense to try to keep yourself in this pattern that is miserable, but also familiar. Okay. So we're going to take this data and we're going to look at it judgment free. We're going to look at it objectively and we're going to decide what do I do with this from here on out? Now that I have this information, you know, and you don't have to do this over a week, you guys, you can literally do this for one day. You can do it for a day and really start to see, okay, where do I go from here? I think a week is a good gauge, especially when you know you need to get back on track. You, you know you're not doing things that are making you feel good. Um, but if you're just now listening to this, do it for a day or two, and then you still have information to pull. Okay. And there's something that I have done for years. I mean, forever in business. And every time there's a big project or a big launch or, you know, some type of initiative like that, we'll have meetings to talk about how things went. Because no matter what you're doing, even when you knock it out of the park, there's always lessons to be learned. There's always some kind of lesson that we can we can learn from any situation, even when we're killing it and we're losing weight and we're meeting our goals. There's always learning opportunities. So one of the things that I have done for many, many, many years, um, pretty much since I started in the workforce in in an office environment in corporate um, and I've taken this now it, within my own business, being self-employed, and that's a method called start, stop, continue. And we will do this like in an after action review to really like submit the lessons that worked, what we never should do again, and what we can continue to do and what we should start doing. So I'm going to use this method with you guys um, in the weight loss world for your weight loss goals. And you can apply this literally to anything in your life, anything in your life that you want to work on. You know, even parenting, even in your relationships, your marriage, you can use the start, stop, continue method for any of those things. So it really is as clear as what it sounds like. You're going to look at the data, aka you're going to look at your food, your um, your food journal, okay? And you're going to make some, some notes. So you can do this however you want. If you want to do little post-it notes, if you want to get different color pens, um, that symbolize start, stop, continue. That's up to you, boo. You do you. Whatever is going to help you in your journey to create the life you crave, okay? So normally it goes, what should we start? What should we stop doing? What should we continue doing? Okay? I want to do this backwards because I think if we, when you're looking at weight loss, which is very personal, Right? You are still in a place where you have a lot of emotion connected to this process. If we go with what do we start doing before we've looked at what we should continue and what should we should stop, I feel like you're going to get stuck in judgment. So we're going to start backwards and work our way through and we're going to start with what should I continue doing, okay? And so this is where you're going to look at your food plan and you're going to see what are the things that are working well for me and what should I continue doing? Okay. So I'm going to just pull mine up because like I said, I also um, completed the same assignments because I'm trying to get back on track as well. So um, let me see here. All right. Let me pull this up on my phone. All right. So I'm going to look at couple of days from last week and y'all I mean 
I've been I've been kind of struggling here. Let me just tell you. So I've been using the Weight Watchers app to track my food. Um, it's just something I've done for years. I find it really helpful for me. And just to give you an example, <laughs> I have a day this week actually where I there's a couple. We have we have a couple of days, y'all. No shame in my game. No shame because we're not judging. I have 123 daily points used. So for those of you that know the WW plan, you know that's a lot of food. Um, and on that day, I, yeah, I had um, fast food. I had fast food twice. <laughs> I had Halloween candy. Like, it was a whole hot mess. There was a lot of overeating going on. So I... And this is why I think it's actually better. I know I said you could do like a day or two of data. I really think to get the optimal plan here, we need to do a whole week. Because then we start to see trends, right? I really can't see a trend for one day, okay? So when I look at myself and I say, okay, what should I continue doing? Okay, one of the things I know I'm going to continue doing is drinking water. I am really, really good about drinking enough water every day I have this massive uh, my favorite one I have a massive bubble cup they're my favorite it keeps my drinks cold I literally can keep this thing in my truck um for like a day like overnight all day long and my drink is still cold I, it's just it's crazy to me so I know that I have a really good habit of drinking water if I don't drink my water I feel sick I feel sluggish I feel bloated and I was not someone who drank water. I know that sounds absolutely insane. Like, who doesn't drink water? Like, what? You're human. You need water. My entire life, until I was in my early 20s, I am now 41, I never drank water. I had the excuse that it was gross. It makes me gag. It has no taste. And then I started learning how to drink water. And I learned how to drink water by first getting carbonated water because I was such a soda drinker. I went from being nothing but Coke to a Diet Pepsi girl, and that's all I will drink now as far as soda. So I needed something carbonated. So I would drink these Walmart brand carbonated um, waters. They were like strawberry flavored. And then I was able to drink regular water. And now, guys, if I don't have my ice cold water, like I cannot, I cannot survive. It's like it's part of my routine. I don't even think about it. It's an automatic process. And that is what we want to get to with so many of our habits around food. So when it comes to, to continuing, I'm going to continue drinking my water at least 100 ounces a day. Okay. So the cup that I have right now, it's a 32 ounce cup. If I fill that bad boy up like at least three times a day, I know I'm getting in enough water, okay? Another thing I'm going to continue doing, and now I've been doing this for over 20 years, is drinking Diet Pepsi. I'm not a big coffee drinker. I am not someone who has to wake up and have coffee. I will go to Starbucks once in a while, um, but I am not a coffee drinker. I do love my Diet Pepsi. I need my caffeine. I'm going to continue doing that. That is something that works for me. It's something I enjoy, and I'm going to continue doing it, okay? And based on last week, <laughs> uh, this is okay. Um, based on, on last week, there's not a lot that I want to continue doing on my current trajectory. <laughs> it's just not good, guys. Um, it, there's not a lot here that I want to continue doing because I've been falling back into some really bad habits. So... One thing that I'm also good at is I'm good at eating the same breakfast every day. I've been eating it for years. And I actually have kind of fell off of that for the past couple of months. And so instead of eating my normal like egg beaters and avocado, I've been eating um, the Jimmy Dean like turkey sausage croissants. They're a little bit higher in points, but they're delicious. And it saves me a lot of time in the morning. And for right now, based on my, based on my lifestyle and where things are in my life and the time that I have or the time that I don't have, that's something that I'm going to probably continue doing at least for a little while longer. So those are some of my continue. So I'm, I think you're starting to see what I'm talking about is looking for opportunities. 
of the things that you know, they work really, really well. Okay. And again, you could do this for anything. We're specifically talking around your food, your diet. Okay. So the second thing is, what should I stop doing? When we talk about the things we should stop doing, these are the items or the things that are not working for you. They either need to be completely stopped or you need to find a way to um, fix them or modify in some way, okay? Here's what I want you to be really careful about when you go to the stop. It's really easy when you look at your food and your food journal to find all the things you're doing wrong. That's not what this is about at all, okay? This is not about finding what's wrong. This is not about finding what's wrong with you. This is about analyzing the data, again, objectively, okay, and saying, okay, what are some of the things I should stop doing that's probably not working for me? And here's the thing. You don't need to be a nutritionist, okay? You don't need to be a dietitian. Girl, you know what's not working, okay? You know. You know what's not working. So I don't want you also getting caught up in excuses. Well, I don't know what to eat, and I'm not sure what's healthy. If, you're, if your ass is in the drive-thru twice a day, uh, Amy, if your ass is in the drive-thru twice a day, we know that's not working. Now, if I was at a place where I'm super busy and I've been on the road and I have really no other options – it's okay that I'm going to the drive-thru. What's not okay and what's not working is what I'm ordering. Okay? <laughs> like a Big Mac is not working. We need to stop doing that because I know how to make better choices. All right? So you want to go through there and you want to start to write down or highlight or, you know, post it noted or whatever. What are the things that are not working that I need to stop doing? Okay? I know I need to stop going to the drive-thru obviously multiple times a day and I need to cut back on fast food period because we've been doing a lot of fast food. I know that I need to stop digging into the Halloween candy. I have to stop doing that. Am I going to stop eating candy? No, but we need to have limits. We need to have, you know, there, there's got to be boundaries. You got to have boundaries around food or this is never going to work for you. Okay. So that's what you should stop doing. The next one is what should I start doing? These are the items that when you look at your list, they're things that, you know, you have considered or you think you should be doing, but you're not doing them presently. So this is where to find opportunities for improvement. So I have the things I'm going to continue, the things I'm going to stop doing, and then I'm going to look at this and say, okay, where is the opportunity here? What could I start doing differently? I need to start planning my meals on Sundays. That's for me personally. I'm not telling you to put the same thing. For me, for my life, for my family, for the way my life is set up, I know I need to set up the meal plan on Sunday. So that I, and, and then what I also do is I take that a step further is I put it in our Google Calendar. So that I, it, like, mentally prepares my brain to know that, okay, after work tonight, I know that I'm cooking, you know, tacos or whatever. And my brain is not going, Ooh, what are we going to order for food? Like we got to stop. Like one of my other stops is ordering food. I just have to stop. It's convenient. It's fast. It tastes good. It's easy. It's convenient. It's fast. And I say those things <laughs> like I have to stop doing that. And the reason I'm ordering food out as much as I'm ordering food out is because I'm pressed for time, because I'm not being intentional about my meals. So I know I have to start meal prepping on Sunday, not on Monday, on Sunday. That's an opportunity for improvement. Okay. Um, what should I start doing? I should start building in. Dessert, sweets. I know that I enjoy those things. I know that I can enjoy them way too much. It's why my blog was Irresistible Icing. There's a whole story behind it. We need to have boundaries and limitations. 
around that. I don't think you should ever completely cut certain things out. I think you need to learn how to do them in moderation. And I have forgotten or not been as intentional about being in moderation lately. It's been a free for all. Okay. So what are those areas of opportunity for you? What are some things that you want to start doing? I'm going to also caution you on this one. This is not the time or place for you to get in like shooting all over yourself. I should be doing this. I should be doing that. I should be. You're not here to set 500 goals. I would probably say to keep this really simple and doable is in each bucket, continue, stop, and start. I would find three things in each one. So three things I'm going to continue, three things I'm going to stop, and three things I'm going to start. Because emotional eaters, you're perfectionist. You're all or nothing people, okay? That's just how our brains are. And if you try to go hard with like 10 things to start doing and 10 things to stop doing, you are setting yourself up to fail. I promise you, you're setting yourself up to fail. So make it simple. And then this week, that guess what your homework is, guys? You're going to do this exercise, but you're also going to implement. So you're going to do your, your start, stop, continue. And you're going to implement as well. And then you're going to have data again. And then at the end of the week, you're going to sit down. You're going to get quiet. You're going to put on your spa, your Zen music. You're going to light a candle. You're going to lock everybody out of your room. Or you're going to go sit in your car and hide. Okay. And you're going to do start, stop, continue. You're going to look at all of those things. And you're going to build a plan for the following week. And you can literally do this week after week after week after week. And I think it's just a good exercise, not again, not just with food, but like every week, this is a good exercise to be like, okay, what went really well this week? What should I continue next week? What should I stop doing? What should I start doing? It's just so simple, but effective and powerful. And it's going to help you just get to where you want to be without looking at, oh my God, I have a hundred pounds to lose. Oh my God, I'm never going to be able to do it. Oh my God, I'm doing everything right, but nothing's happening. That is a lie. That is a story that you are creating for yourself. Because if you were truly, and here's the thing, if you were truly doing everything in your power to reach your weight loss goals, something would be happening. And if you really are doing everything, then That's the time to schedule an appointment with your doctor. I mean, seriously, right? That's a whole nother discussion, a whole nother topic for another day. But for the majority of you listening, you're not being honest with yourselves. You want to pretend that you're doing everything right and just sweep everything under the rug. Oh, that that fun size Snickers, that doesn't really count. And, oh, I ate some of my kids' Happy Meal. No, that doesn't count. And next thing you know, it does count (laughs) okay so I want to know how this is going I want you guys to implement this Um, again it's a simple sheet of paper it is um, a note on your phone it does not need to be complicated guys we don't need to like go to home goods and get the pretty journals and the pretty notebooks and the pretty pens like that's all good and well but do the damn work first like actually do the work All right. And I think as you get accustomed to this process and you learn how to do things without the inner fat bitch judgment and you learn how to become more self-aware, as time goes on, you will do it, start, stop, continue. Because the reason I don't want you doing that now is I don't believe you're ready for that. I think it's very, it's much easier to look at what do I continue, what do I stop, and now what do I start, okay? Three things in each bucket, guys. That's it. If you want to share this with me, you can share it over on Instagram at Irresistible Icing. You can tag me. You can DM me over there. You can share it inside the Facebook group. And I would love to know how you're doing and how this is working for you. Next week, we will have another episode. I am really, really looking forward to that. We're going to be talking about what would you change or what would change if you lost the weight. 
what would change in your life if you lost weight and what you can actually start doing now no matter what weight you are, okay? So we're going to talk about that. If this episode has been helpful, if my podcast is helpful to you guys in any sort of way, I would love to hear that feedback. And the best way to give that feedback is by leaving a rating and review over on Apple Podcast. I read every single one of them. That just makes my day. It also helps other women to find the podcast. If you have a friend or a family member that would benefit, please share this with them as well. And I'm going to catch you next week in the next episode. Until then, stay irresistible. Bye, guys.